Hello everybody, hope you have fun at home uh, being in your house at the moment. Today we talk about this book which was a pretty obscure book of uh, best-selling author Dean Koontz that came into notoriety recently because it uh, kind of predicts the current situation with uh, COVID-19. There's a mention of a virus here called Yuhan 400 and people thought that this book, written in 1981, was predicting the whole uh, situation. And that's why I had the book in my uh, bookshelves. I got it out, I read it, and um, let's talk about it. Alright, this is The Eyes of Darkness, and uh, Dean Kutz himself, in the afterword of the book, is um, very candid about the issues this book has. I don't suggest you go out and read this book, um, that's my opinion, so I'll explain why I say that in this video. However, there is this um, conspiracy theory around this book that it predicted a uh, what we currently live in early 2020 virus that makes everybody stay at home and I hope you stay at home and you're safe everybody I hope you, everything will be fine and we'll talk about this uh, later in uh, this review however I think we should first talk about this book The Eyes of Darkness I've read these books simply because of its notor notoriety and it will make a good video I think and oh boy, that was very hard. It was very hard to read this book because um, it's bad. It's a very weak book by Dean Koontz. I have a very uh, mixed uh, bag with Dean Koontz books. It's the sixth book I've read from Dean Koontz. I've liked half of his books. I've really liked The Watchers, Demon Seed, and The Bad Place. And this one, uh, By the Light of the Moon, and The Face were books that I absolutely did not like at all, so it's uh, it's an even split and much of it comes down to Dean Koontz tropes because in every one of his books he uses most of the same tropes there is always a secret government experiment there are always people with, with telepathic abilities and there is a psycho killer out there who is very evil, very perverted and is after the heroes who are very pure and um, they love each other and they have uh, a very wholesome and clean sex scene. Yep, that's that's some of the tropes you see here too. It's no surprise. And I think it all comes down to how he uses these tropes. I mean, I loved The Bad Place because he takes all these tropes. Most of all, there's no government conspiracy. But still, he takes most of these tropes and gets really nasty about them. And he has a really wry sense of humor in all of his books. And he also get dark at some points, and he gets good at dark because it's fun reads. He just twisted these tropes around, it was fun. Uh, in this book, not so much. He first wrote this book in um, 1981 as um, Lee Nichols. It was of his pen names. And his um, purpose was to get his usual... Um, a science fiction thriller and uh, combine it with uh, romantic suspense. I don't think it is a mark. I think it tries to both and manages to do neither of them. I was, you know, I was reading a page or three every day of this book and yesterday I said, you have to finish this because you have to make this video. And um, so I soldiered through the book and every 50 pages or so I had to go to a torpor. I was so exhausted by the boredom reading this book that I had to go to sleep. It drained me of all my energy and life and reason to stay awake, I think. And that's pretty bad for a thriller. This book was written in 1981 and Dean later rewrote it in 1996 using his own name. And he had written five novels as Lee Nichols. However, this one was the last to be reprinted and I can see why, because this 
novel is not good. So what is the premise? The premise is that we have our main heroine, Tina, who was recently divorced. She used to be a dancer in Las Vegas. Her only son died in a weird, uh, tragic accident while on a scouting trip. Never saw the body in the casket because it was very mangled and everybody said, don't say this, don't say this, you won't be able to make it. And after that, she divorced her husband, who was an asshole, and she started working very hard uh, organizing a performance and we have the first 50 pages or so devoted this performance so something is happening it doesn't come later in the book uh, so while she's surrounding the performance she starts to get some messages that are very mysterious she has there is writing on her um, son's room saying that I'm not dead she freaks out so the performance premieres in great success because she's a very capable businesswoman and she can do it and she meets Elliot Stryker, yes, Stryker with a Y because uh, misspelling is cool, I guess and he is a former intelligence operative who is now working as a very successful lawyer he is very handsome, very manly, he's a great cook so imagine Jack Reacher and Gordon Ramsay uh, wrapped in one He's the perfect man, and he says the man falls in love with her, and they date. They have the wholesome, uh, clean, romantic sex scene, of course. And upon hearing that, she gets these messages, and she freaks out. He says, no problem, we'll exhume your son's body. But uh, it's a Dean Kuhn's book, so you know that there's going to be a conspiracy, deviant killer, and uh, psychic abilities. So uh, the ne very next day, two agents come to Stryker's house and they want to derogate him, but he manages to knock them out because he's an awesome former spy, and of course very awesome. Uh, so he takes their notes because they had questions on a paper that they have to ask him, and this gives him a hint about what's happening. So him and Tina are on the run, and that's the main problem with the book because there is no suspense, and this is bad for a thriller book. Because answers to the questions posed the heroes come out of the thin air, literally. Because we have, uh, you know, we have uh, messages coming to them, and they keep coming and coming and coming. Of course, Stryker is an awesome uh, former agent, he has the answers for everything, and even when he doesn't, everything falls in place, and mysterious things happen, and that means that the characters are never threatened, which is bad, uh, because the tension is not there. And um, yeah, even the plot, the reason why it happens, it relies on chance, on coincidence. And this is not good, because it makes the characters irrelevant. Of course, if the characters were well written, uh, it would be a good book. But no, the characters are not. I mean, Dean Koontz has this habit of introducing character, having pages and pages of um, info dump of their lives, who they are, what they were like, what they do in their lives, where they lived, what they did before, how they got where they got, and then they do what they're supposed to do to fit the plot and then they disappear. So yes, the character are cardboard cutouts and that's not good. Even the psycho killer appears too late in the book to make it enjoyable because the good psycho killers are uh, fun. They add some nastiness to the book, and here the psycho killer appears very late. He adds uh, no um, disturbance in this book, and then he is whipped away by the plot, the magic Deus Ex Machina that constantly appears and makes stuff happen. And yes, I mean, there is nothing there that's worth reading. This book, not great. Sorry, it's a very uh, solid read, a very uh, tepid thriller. And in the afterward, Kunz himself says that um, he could have written this book from scratch and fix all the issues it has, but instead added some minor edits to make it more current with the 90s. And that brings us to our conspiracy theory. Um, I have managed to get uh, an older version of this book, 
the Lee Nichols version was translated when Fred had it, and this uh, translated version was from 1991. And on this book, the virus is called Gorky 400 because it's Russian, not Chinese, says in this version. And it was supposed to infect the brain immediately, had a very fast incubation period, only four hours. And what they did was destroying brain tissue, so people lost all mobility and they died because they couldn't breathe. It only affected people, and after it left the human body, it just died. And that's the absolute opposite of everything we know about the current virus that came from Yuvan China. So that's coincidental. In 1996, Tim Goods rewrote this book, established that, and at this point, the Cold War has stopped. And that meant Russia, the former USSR, was uh, in shambles. It was a bankrupt country, uh, but since he had to keep the red threat, plot point of the book, have this secret organization that tried to fight the uh, red virus, had to change it to China. He went for, instead of using Gorky 400, he went for a seat in China, Yuhan. It's a big uh, industrial city in China. So he just chose one Chinese city. And, uh, you know, in the past 20 years, we had a lot of pandemics start from China, down in different cities so from China. And, um, you know what, it's not uh, weird because um, these cities are overpopulated. A good portion of the human population lives in China. And, of course, there are some... Um, issues with uh, hygiene, especially public markets, when you have different animals stacked one next to the other, so we have uh, cross pollution between species, it often gets to humans, and of course the overpopulation is uh, what makes uh, an epidemic more dangerous, because it's very probable many people will be infected very fast. So um, yeah, eventually there will be a um, virus starting from Wuhan, it's uh, something that will happen. So yes, the conspiracy theory is a, it's a coincidence. But um, yeah, it's not. I mean, even on that point, the, cons the conspiracy theory of this book is remarkable when you start to see and think about it. And you know what? If you want to read Din, to read Din Kuhn's The Eyes of Darkness, oh, not worth it. You should go read The Watchers or The Bad Place. And I hear great things about old Thomas and fandoms. I haven't read them yet, so um, I don't know about them. But yes, uh, this book, just take this explanation and run with it. Nothing to read here. So that was my review for Eyes of Darkness. Have you read this book? If you did, please leave a comment below about if you liked it or not. As always, um, if you like this video, please press the like button, subscribe to the channel for more. Hope you were not traumatized by what you saw a little earlier. I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat this. I'm very, very sorry. It was a spare of the moment decision. I uh, won't we'll do it again, or maybe I'll do that if you want to, but not too often. And thank you for watching. Have fun and stay safe.